now for this, uh, I guess, weekend edition of videos on Know Your Popes. Uh, I haven't done this for a couple weeks because the back-to-back uh, -back holidays we had with Christmas and New Year's, they weren't open on Saturdays, uh, so I wasn't doing these videos, but now I'm back at it, and so I want to do a video today on Pope Boniface VIII. Okay, so he's a little closer to us. He's kind of a mid-church history pope. Uh, I should say mid-Catholic church history pope. Uh, the other two I did were early church history. Um, this guy actually reigned in the early 14th century, uh, from 1294 until 1303, um, Pope Boniface reigned in the papacy. And what's interesting is how he came to power, the previous pope, um, abdicated from the throne. That's very rare that a pope will abdicate, but he did, and uh, I'll cover the reasons for that when I do a video on him, but the next pope to abdicate would not be until our lifetimes, uh, most of our lifetimes, I should say, uh, when Pope Benedict XVI abdicated. He's still alive. The current pope's predecessor, okay, Francis's predecessor, was Benedict XVI, and he abdicated. He was the first pope to do that since the predecessor of today's pope that we're talking about, Pope Boniface VIII. Now, one of the things about his predecessor was that he was very weak in um, the affairs of state with other countries, other leaders, very weak. So, when Boniface came in, he was the opposite of that. Uh, it was written of him that he was a very short-tempered man. There is an account of him kicking an envoy in the face, an envoy from another government came to see him and he just hauled off and kicked the guy in the face. Um, there's another account where an archbishop he didn't care for um, came to him for a blessing and he bowed before the Pope to receive a blessing and Boniface took some ashes and threw them in the guy's eyes. He knocked the ashes into this archbishop's eyes so um, that was the blessing he, he received from Pope Boniface. So he was very uh, short-tempered man and would be physically violent and that actually led to some strong changes in regards to uh, papal power, papal power through church history. Boniface took it up a notch for the popes. He, uh, the, one of his famous quotes that he, he made was we declare, I'm going to read it here, we declare, say, define, and pronounce that it is absolutely necessary for the salvation of every human creature to be subject to the Roman pontiff. Okay, so he was making it clear that you must fall under the authority of the Pope in, in all matters, temporal and uh, eternal, spiritual, political, all matters are beneath the Pope of Rome. That kind of a claim was pretty strong. It hadn't been made. There were people that felt that way, but it wasn't actually issued in official documents until Pope Boniface VIII came along. Now, why did that happen? There was a conflict between King Philip IV of France and Pope Boniface. Um, basically, what the King of France wanted to do was start taxing the Catholic Church. He saw the great wealth of the Roman Catholic Church and felt like they, if they're going to meddle in the government affairs, they should have to pay a portion into the, uh, the governments. They should be supporting the governments. And so he required payment from the Catholic Churches in France. Uh, Pope Boniface did not like this. He was very angry about it. And so he told the uh, clergymen in France there not to pay anything to the King of France. As a result, the king of France um, no longer allowed gold or precious stones or silver to be sent to the papal states that the pope was in charge of. So that cut off a lot of revenue uh, to the pope. So if the pope's not going to pay some taxes in France to the king, then none of the wealth in France is going to go to the pope. So uh, you follow the money and you'll see this, this great conflict between the pope Pope Boniface and King Philip IV. So they're going back and forth fighting over this, this money. And Pope Boniface issues this, uh, this decree, this declaration. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce it. It's Asculta Fili. Asculta Fili is how it's pronounced. 
And what that said is that every government power, everyone must be subject to the Pope of Rome. When this document that the Pope had signed, put a seal on it, everything that's official, when that was sent to Paris, right away, as soon as it got there, Philip IV took it and threw it into the flames. He threw it in the fire and burned it up. He didn't want anything to do with that. He was rejecting the authority of Boniface. So Boniface uh, then released the Unum Sanctum, which said everyone is beneath the Pope of Rome. It, it just it said what he had said before, but with a little more gusto, basically. He really drove the point home that everyone's beneath him, and even your salvation depends on you being beneath him. So that quote I gave you that he's famous for, it all came as a result of this conflict with the king of France at that time. He was trying to show himself as the most powerful man on earth over all matters. Okay, spiritual, carnal, everything. So, how did the king of France respond to that? He went to where the Pope's office was at that time with an army. Okay, He sent an army there, and that army went into the Pope's estate and kidnapped Pope Boniface. Now, he was 73 years old at this time. And they held him prisoner for three days. So he was kidnapped, and they beat him severely. He was very beaten. And I want to read an account here. There's an account uh, talking about sort of what happened and what went on. A uh, couple paragraphs. And you'll see here that he was, he was very bloodied and, and beaten up as a result of being kidnapped by the king of France. So... It says, And when Scara and the others, his enemies, came to him, they mocked at him with vile words and arrested him and his household, which had remained with him. Among others, William of Nogare, who had conducted the negotiations for the king of France, scorned him and threatened him, saying that he would take him bound to Lyon on the Rhone, and there in a general council would cause him to be deposed and condemned. So the king of France has taken upon himself to depose the pope. Okay. No man dared to touch Boniface, nor were they pleased to lay hands on him. So the, the, he didn't have the support of the people in this. This was a, his own personal feud. Nor were they pleased to lay hands on him, but they left him robbed under light arrest, or I'm sorry, robed under light arrest and were minded to rob the treasure of the Pope and the church. In this pain, shame, and torment, the great Pope Boniface abode prisoner among his enemies for three days. The people, beholding their error and issuing from their blind ingratitude, suddenly rose in arms. So the people rose up, okay, showing that they cared more about the Pope than the king. So they rose up and drove out um, Sciara della Colonna and his followers, that was the leader of the army that uh, Philip had sent, with loss to them of prisoners and slain, and freed the Pope and his household. Pope Boniface departed immediately with his court and came to Rome and St. Peter's to hold a council. But the grief which had hardened in the heart of Pope Boniface by reason of the injury which he had received produced in him once he had come to Rome, a strange malady, so that he gnawed at himself as if he were mad, and in this state he passed from this life on the 12th day of October in the year of Christ, 1303, and in the church of St. Peter near the entrance of the doors in a rich chapel, which was built in his lifetime. He was honorably buried. Now, that is the account we have of him being kidnapped, and beaten, and then freed by the people, but they said that there was something that, that caused him to go crazy, and he was gnawing at himself and hurting himself. Well, years later, they were doing some work where he was buried, and they accidentally exhumed the body. So they seized this opportunity to examine the body, and they found that his hands were intact, and they were fine, and that his, his skull was fine. So the rumor that the Pope had gone crazy and chewed up his hands and beat his brains out on the wall uh, was not true. However, we do know he was beaten and treated badly physically as a 73-year-old man, and he died one month after this kidnapping. So it is believed that his, uh, the beating he received caused him to die, 
but it wasn't self-inflicted wounds. It was the wounds of the people that held him. Perhaps they made up the story about him wounding himself to death um, because they didn't want to be charged with murdering the Pope after seeing how the people revolted and said, we don't care about our king, we care about our Pope. So that, that's, that's huge. Um, then after he died, Philip was still around, and uh, there was another pope that came in that's considered an anti-pope now, but then the next pope that came in was Clement V, Pope Clement V, and he gave in to pressure from the king of France to hold a posthumous trial, which is a post-mortem trial, a trial of a dead person. So they put Pope Boniface on trial after he's dead, and they found him guilty of uh, sodomy and heresy, sodomy and heresy. Now, whether or not that indicates he actually was a sodomite and, or, or anything along those lines, I don't know. But that was what they found him guilty of uh, when they judged the morality of this pope. Now, why is this all important? Pope Boniface stood up for papal authority. He said, we as the popes have authority over everything. And he would not back down, even when he was kidnapped and beaten. And then the people rose up in his defense. What did that show Rome? The people will support the idea of the Pope being the absolute ruler. And from this time on, Pope just grabbed more power, more power, more power, until you get to the point where the secular kings are bowing to the Popes. And um, the whim of a Pope can decide the fate of Europe at that point. But Pope Boniface really did a lot to advance the authority of the Popes. Um, all over the known world at that time because he wouldn't bow to the king and he even forced, he, he didn't order it. It was a natural response of the people to uh, take up arms, rebel against their king, and save their pope. And, and that did lay a foundation for an overabundance of power in the hands of the popes that would follow after Boniface VIII. And that's why he's so uh, important to Roman Catholic history.